In this video, I'm going to walk you through Google Search Console, which is a tool you can use to see how your search engine optimization is going at its current state. This will give you tons of ideas of how to improve, what things are working, what things are not. So let's dive in. Hi, I'm Lainey. I'm a wedding invitation designer, and I love to teach creatives how to run successful businesses. A lot of creatives ignore things like search engine optimization, which is a huge oversight because you're basically connecting your products with people who are already searching for what you want. So if you think about what you search on Google, you're searching Thai food near me, you're searching DJs in San Diego, you're searching wedding invitations, um, cake makers, whatever it is that you are pretty much ready to buy, or at least more ready to buy than, a, you know, something you totally randomly stumble across on the internet. So if you can get people who are already looking to buy what you have and further connect them with your products and your website, then you're going to make more money. I have a few other intro videos to search engine optimization um, here on my SEO playlist. So just check those out before you dive into this if you're not sure what keywords are. Google Search Console is a free tool from Google. They also have Google Analytics, which is gonna show you a lot about how a user is interacting with your website. Search Console is a little simpler. It's only showing your performance on your search results and a few other small things, but we'll focus on this search results tab right here. The main thing you should do is go in and claim your domain so that it can start collecting data for you um, so that you can, when you're ready to fully dive into this, you'll have a lot of data in here. So go ahead and sign up, claim your domain, et cetera, and then you can get the data all loaded in here. So on this search results tab, you can do, see a lot of information. This is kind of your main piece that you'll start with. And there's a lot of ways you can improve or see success metrics based on these different metrics that it provides you. Of course, you can sort, filter, do whatever you want. I'm just gonna keep it as it is right now to give you some examples. So total clicks is going to be your most important. This is how many people are clicking on your website. Impressions is how many times people are actually seeing your work. So when they search something, if you're on page 10 of Google, maybe they're not actually seeing it. Technically, it's an impression, um, but probably they're not going to end up clicking. So clicks is the most important. And you do want to have a good click through rate. You also would like to theoretically improve this over time. But at the same time, if you're getting a ton and ton of clicks, and you have a crappy click-through rate, that's still okay. I would like to think that sometimes increasing your click-through rate a little bit is low-hanging fruit. It's stuff you're already showing up for. Just try to show up a little bit better for it. Uh, but a reason, there's a few reasons that you might get an impression for something, but not a click. Most people just click on position one on Google. Um, so that's absolutely something. If you're past the first page, chances are you're getting 10% or fewer of the viewers. Um, so you definitely want to increase your position in those cases, but there's a couple other reasons. So let's take this Dubsado versus HoneyBook. It's one of my best keywords. And you can see the first result is from HoneyBook. The second result is from Dubsado. And the third result is from me. So why might I be getting clicks from this? Um, okay, I'm the first result that is comparing these two systems that is not one of those two systems. So that might look really good. I also am showing up here for videos. So people might be like, oh, this girl really knows what she's talking about. She's getting clicks. These are eye catching. Something that is preventing me from getting clicks here is specifically this 2022 review now that it's 2024. And also you can see the date of the original blog published in 2021. You can also see that up here in the link. So that might be deterring people from clicking on this that might be something that I can improve to overall improve my click-through rate is just update this to be a 2024 review, add some new content and change the publishing date. Another thing here is this little snippet, which is typically the meta description. Sometimes Google just takes over and puts what it thinks is most relevant to people. So you don't always have control over this, uh, what's gonna show up here. But I will say like, in my opinion, this like talking about money, is not the most enticing. So if you have the ability to change your meta description, I know that I have changed my meta description and Google has just like overrided me in this particular case. Uh, but just try to change that to something that's really enticing. For instance, Dubsado is using, um, Dubsado has no added fees on top of standard credit card, et cetera. So they're kind of using a very specific thing that might be really enticing for people to click. HoneyBook is probably uh, doing the same thing. Yeah, this one's easy. It comes down to Dove's Auto costs 10 extra dollars. It's a great example of why beginning an impression 
but not a click. Your position is something that's important to pay attention to, but as we scroll down, we'll see our individual search queries. So these are also known as keywords. So basically just anything that you type in the search bar and you can see there's like more than a thousand here. So my average position is 28.7. That doesn't seem amazing by any means, but you're also taking into account like over a thousand different keywords that I'm ranking on. So I do pay attention to position and I think increasing your position on valuable keywords is kind of that low hanging fruit. It's an easy way to just make more sales off of the content that you already have. But all of SEO comes with a little bit of context. So for instance, I have this article about white ink printing that I did about a printer that is no longer in production. I do have an affiliate link to it on on that blog post and sometimes it sells like refurbished versions of it um, but the printer is no longer even in production so i can't really monetize this article that much at all so i have been like actively trying to get other things to move up in position and this post to move down in position so you can see my position is much lower here and you can see how much lower the click-through rate is here i get eleven thousand impressions and only 148 clicks whereas something else like I'm getting, well, this is my name, but you know, I get 600 impressions and almost all of the clicks for that. Or these are at least like in the 10% or more range for some of these other search terms that are much bigger revenue drivers for my business. So you have to give it a little context as well. Like when we look at this, we have to think if I were a user, why would I click on one versus not clicking on another? And when you look at keywords, it's like, okay, yeah, my position isn't so great on this. 6.7, I could go a little higher potentially. However, is that actually going to benefit my business versus things like Dips Auto and Honeybook, Best Printer, how to start a stationary business is like the core concept of my entire business. So I'm going to try and get this 3.1 all the way up, try to clinch that second spot, try to clinch that first spot as easily as I can. So when I'm looking through these keywords and trying to see how to do better. I'm either looking at queries I really want to rank for or pages specifically that I really want to rank. So this is going to show you each individual page. And then if you click on it, it's going to break down the queries just for that page. So you can break it down in a lot of different ways. I'm going to return back to just the main queries page and show you a few of the things that I look for. So and when I'm filtering, I might filter by position and I want my position to be smaller than let's say 25. So that's going to be two and a half pages on Google. And then from there, I want to see what I'm getting the most impressions for that. I have a high a one through 25 position on. What this is going to show me is keywords where I'm already showing up a lot in the search results. However, my position could be anywhere from one to 25. So I'm paying attention to ones where it will be easy to grow in position. So yes, we have the white ink printer. Um, we have Dubsado even by itself without the verse honey book or something like that. That's great. Um, CMYK color palette. This is going to be a really great example because I sell a CMYK color palette. That's a great business driver for me. So I'm getting 5,000 impressions on this and I'm at position 7.2. So if I can question, Hey, how do I get this up from position 7.2 to position six to position five? Because the further up closer to one you get, you're going to, it's going to make such a big difference. Getting from page two to page one will make a huge difference. So getting from number 11 down to number 10 is going to be really powerful. So if I click on this keyword, I can see like which pages are coming up specifically for it. And you can see like I have several impressions for some of these other pages, but no one has really clicked on it. So this is the one that most people are clicking on. And so then my question is, how do I get people to click this a little bit more? I can go and type this in and I can look at my search results for it. I also can go into our pages tab and click on the page that's ranking the highest for that keyword and then see all the different queries that are showing up. Although, I mean, there's more than a thousand queries showing up just for this one page. So in this case, like which ones are getting me the most impressions or which ones are already getting me the most clicks? How can I continue to improve this page so that 
all of these search results are getting me more and more clicks. So maybe what I can do is add in some options where I'm spelling it with a U because that's going to be like the British way to spell it. Um, this one says gray color code. So that's an example of a paragraph I could add into my article about a gray color code and include a couple gray color codes that are going to be helpful to people to get them onto my page. Um, is CMYK for print? This is a great keyword for me because I'm definitely not getting a lot of clicks, but I am getting a decent number of impressions over the last three months. And I love to teach people about printing, about stationary printing. Um, I make some money from some of my printer partnerships. So this would be a really good one for me to teach on because once people learn about CMYK and printing, they might use some of my uh, partner codes that I might get paid for. They might buy one of the printers that I recommend, which I might get paid for. They might sign up for one of my printing courses or illustrator courses or something like that. So I'm thinking about these things as, as to how can I get more relevant eyes onto my article. I don't necessarily want to target this keyword of CMYK too much because my article isn't specifically explaining what CMYK is or how to use it, even though that's a lot of impressions. Um, that's not very relevant to my article and that's not what people are using. And then even if you go with like gray color code, I can provide some examples of gray color codes, but is that going to entice anyone who's searching for a gray color code to actually buy any of my products? Maybe, maybe not. So you're often balancing like the relevancy versus just getting eyes on your work. And there's always, you know, there's always a little bit of gray area, gray color code area, <laughs> because someone who's looking for a gray color code might see my palette and be like, oh, there's tons of grays in here. I'll purchase this and see which gray is right for me. Um, but a lot of people might just be looking for a color code that prints gray and they'll see some of my options and then they'll leave. So it's never a bad thing to get a lot of eyes on your work. And that's kind of our first instinct with SEO is to just get more and more. Like I had mine up to uh, 10,000 clicks a month. And then now we've got 21,000 over three months. So it's a lot lower than what my peak has been. However, at that peak, there were a lot of people coming from like that white ink printer post from an Instagram post that I did that wasn't making me any money. So I would much rather have a hundred relevant eyes on my work in a month than a thousand eyes that are not very relevant or that are just looking for a quick answer and not actually looking for looking to spend money on something that's a business driver for me. So Search Console has a lot of features that I'm not even using. We're stuck on this one tab and then I'm basically using the queries and pages tabs and that's it. You can definitely see how these other ones might be somewhat useful to you. But in general, I stay on these queries and pages tab and just use these filters in different ways or change my date range or change the different uh, metrics that we're comparing. So you can use this tool very, very simply to get a lot of really valuable information. In general, this is how I measure if my SEO metrics are working and then how I can continue to improve upon them. So even just being here today and looking at only these top 10, like I didn't even go to page two here. Um, I've seen a lot of ideas of things that I can do to further improve my clicks, impressions, positions on the keywords that are going to be the most relevant drivers for my business. I hope this was helpful. Check out some of our other SEO videos on our SEO playlist. And of course, if you want to become a stationary designer, I have tons and tons and tons of resources for you. Just Google how to become, how to start a stationary business and click on that third result. <laughs> Let me know in the comments how I can help you and what other SEO content you'd like to see here on our YouTube channel. Thanks everyone.